Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. New York is a mess. Bad guys are giving the city a bad time. But just when it looked like no one could stop them, oh, look who's back. Yeehaw! Awesome! Woohoo! Yeah. Ninja Cowboy! <laughs> Shredder! Time to find out exactly what this ooze can do. Go! Go, Ninja! Go, Ninja! Go! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. The Secrets of the Ooze. Yeah. never watched this this is i mean the premise is pretty much there turtles who are teenagers and also ninjas that are well we can always branch off a different movie or we only do our first movie of the night as a branch off from the first movie of the per- previous night well again the, the, the thing is you know, I mean, there's continuity here that's going to be our, our the whole glue that keeps it's just, you know, not just random, like, I don't know what we're going to watch next week, Ooh, something. Like, no, it's like, it's no test. It's like, it has to be someone from the previous films. I'm not on fire. I've got a pizza waiting for me on the oven. Um, So we could try Jesus to... Christ, how long has that been in the oven? Well, it's now on top of the oven. It's no... It, okay. It, it, the oven is off, and it is out. Now, so who wants to talk about this film? Give, give the synopsis of this film here, because... I gave the intro. Someone needs to give. That was the intro. That's the intro right there. That was the longest intro in the history of intros. Well, it was. Had, it was. We had the theme music. It was. It was up. It was. Oh, Dan God. and I didn't even get to introduce ourselves. Okay, fine. You okay? Okay. I'm. I'm Thompson. This is the pause where I let you guys introduce yourselves. Oh, I thought you were going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am Josh, or better known as Reginald. And I am Dan, that is my... better known as Nigel. Yep. I'm, I'm the one that's told to be on mute the whole time. Welcome to the fire pit. This is what we're calling it. Ten years ago? Uh, Twelve years ago? No, it was more like for the, the fire pit. To... No, no, we started no, no, doing no, burns a long time ago. Because remember, they used to be... In my backyard with that really shitty ass uh, brick fire pit that I made. Right. Yeah. It was like the, the bricks were so shitty that like the fire would break them at the base of the fire. Right. Yeah. We replace them every now and then. Yeah. We earned that fire pit. What's the next movie on the agenda tonight, gentlemen? Are we doing TMNT two? Let's do TMNT two. Um, let, let me pull up the specifics on this particular movie we're about to watch right now. We are about to screen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two: The Secret of the Ooze. Originally released in 1991, it has a PG rating. It is an hour and 28 minutes long, according to IMDb. And uh, let's see, originally released March 22nd, 1991. Uh, I really don't want to do TMNT2. <laughs> so we just saw the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was essentially turtles get revenge on a ninja on behalf of their ninja rat master. And, oh, sure, I forgot this film was uh, made when Jim Henson died. Well, you know, no, the first movie, he died like three months after the release of it. They streamlined this next movie coming out, and it was like released in, what, 91, 92? No kid. No, oh, yeah, that was back when they could do turnaround, like, within 18 months. I mean, shit, look at Home Alone. Home Alone was, uh, Home Alone 1 came out, and I think it was the next winter Home Alone 2 was already out. Yeah, well, it helps that they, in this one they used a lot of the, some of the same sets and, and on the same costumes and all that stuff, so. Yeah. So, yeah, the last one. The original turtle, Stan Rockwell. We had um, who was the one Corey? Was it Corey Feldman or Corey Haynes? Feldman. Yeah, Corey Feldman is one of the turtles. It was all done on location, but they could get away with not having to get permits. I mean, it was really gorilla. It was the lower, lower budget. It held up 10, 20 years later as grown ass men watching what was ostensibly a cash grab for a cartoon made to sell toys. The mo- that the first movie wasn't re- necessarily a cash grab, though. Like, they oh. genuinely wanted that movie to be a success. We're about to watch the cash grab. It may have not been a cash grab Michael Bay modern sense. It's not fair 
to call the first one a cash grab. I don't yeah. think it is because there wasn't a lot of merchandising behind it other than the cartoon toys. And there's, yeah. well, I'm just saying it definitely was, it's fair to call it capitalizing on the franchise and taking advantage of the franchise while it's hot, which is another thing that Hollywood tends to not do anymore. I mean, Hollywood tends to make movies now on hot properties 10 years or five or six years after they're not hot properties anymore. Like how long before you stopped playing angry birds to when the movie came out? Nobody was playing Angry Birds when the movie came out. They had moved on to the new mobile hotness. Yeah. And that happens with a lot of movies outside of the Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Monster Machine. Like Hollywood now tends to make these movies on pop culture and marketable franchises, <laughs> usually years after they've stopped becoming marketable. Oh, God, um, the Emoji Movie. The Emoji oh. Movie the emoji movies, another good example, which is a cash grab. Um, the, uh, uh-huh. But going in, in the horror concept, the, the Slender Man movie is so past the meme of Slender Man. Like, nobody was paying attention to this anymore. But this was made, well, not, well, this movie was too. Um, but 1990 Turtles was made at the height of the franchise's popularity. Like they got that movie out quick, as relatively speaking. I think yep. the cart- um, it was uh, just over two years after the uh, cartoon premiered. The ca- cartoon premiered in December of '87. Uh, this movie yeah. premiered, or the first movie premiered in March of '90. So just and- a hair over two years. And when this movie came out, you know, and I can attest to it because I think uh, 1990 was second or third grade when this movie came out. Um, This was still at the height of what they called Turtle Mania. Like I still remember the arcade game was in arcades at the time. Video games on Nintendo were incredibly popular. The toys, obviously, you couldn't keep them on the shelves. Um, Oh, God, yeah. I had so many. I still have so many. I got I'm looking at the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, van. Yeah. Oh, in my you basement still, right now. You still have that thing? Yeah, I, um, I still got I still got the blimp somewhere at mom's house. Jesus but, Christmas! Oh, um, I wanted the blimp so bad. I had the pizza thrower one. Yeah, the blimp won't stay inflated anymore. One of the wings <laughs> on it is bent or broken. It's yeah. uh, it's not viable anymore as a toy. Oh um, my god! But I mean, I played with I played with my toys when I was a kid. Yeah, I mean, I played with yeah. them. None of them are collector's items now because I played the shit out of them. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> my daughter's never gonna t- find a treasure trove of dad old GI Joes in the garage someday, and then just be able to retire on it. It's never gonna happen. They're all broken and gone. I have forgotten to do Legos because that's what it sounds like right now. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Um, hey, no, wait, this I, is gonna be this time. I was walking past my uh, son's. Uh, here, I'm gonna post a picture to Discord. I was walking past my son's uh, you trying to toy box, you? and I was like, I saw something. I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta get a picture of this. Oh, I just saw it right on the top. We gave Dan so much crap. I know, I, I know. All the Legos, the toys. Oh, yeah, the, let's call it payback. <laughs> what helped too with the Ninja Turtles over, say, other films made off of cartoon properties like He Man at the time, it had a serious origin. The original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic book was just that grim and gritty kind of indie satire. Oh, movie. yeah. Off of like Daredevil. Well, that was like the original Turtles. thing, but they, they did, definitely didn't keep to that as uh, Turtles evolved. Mm-hmm. Did you guys see that picture I posted on Discord? I did not. I'm not. You know, this my laptop is doing its best with this equipment. It's uh, you know, I, I just want to make a minor tangent real quick here, Tom. Um, I remember you were sitting right next to me when we were discussing me purchasing my last laptop. If that yes. tells you how long ago it was, and I remember I told you. I'm considering buying a Mac. And oh my God, I've never heard you talk more about why I shouldn't do something <laughs> than on that particular conversation. You were texting me later that evening. Like, here's a resource to a good laptop you need to buy. I bought that. I, I ended up buying that Mac and I still use it to this day. It's over seven years old and it works great. My son had a video conference on it today and it does not lag and it does not do that kind of shit like you're complaining yours does. You bought your laptop, and it's newer than my Mac. Just saying. Tangent over. <laughs> so really, this film was just, I mean, the original Turtles. <laughs> a great <laughs> I agree. 
we were all talking about the fond memories of the first one, we, which we just saw, and like we came out of like, oh wow, this is way better than I I remember it. Well, just yeah, because I, I remember, I don't remember exactly. Like I said, I, I highly recommend going through and watching that episode of uh, the Toys That Made Us. But it mm-hmm. talks about specifically what like they went in and they started making that movie, and it came out a lot darker than the executives wanted it to be, and like they basically got no help from the execs, and they finished it. I, I want to say, and I could be wrong on this, that the two creators had to help fund the movie to get it to finish to get made because that's the movie they wanted to see. Mm-hmm. And then after it was released, it got a lot of shit. Like I said, they didn't want to make toys after it, all this other shit. Yeah, afterwards, like all the parents groups just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they came out in arms because, uh, you know, it was too violent. Even though, honestly, it's I, I guess it's pretty tame by today's standards, but... Um, Is it, though? I don't know. I mean... I mean, compare it to a PG-13 movie that's common today. Well, I'm just going to compare it to the current Bay Turtles. Like, you have them being actively kicked off of mountains into Humvees and explosions galore. Like, I, I've never seen it in the new Bay. Yeah, also in the Bay movies. The Bay movies looks like some of the foot soldiers they fight. They straight up kill them. Yeah. Like, whereas in this one, it's never shown them killing any of them. Well, well but not, the, the I, never, it, it, it's, it's a typical thing in TV and cinema. That somebody in a mask can, air quotes, die. That's why in, like, uh, specifically Star uh, Wars cartoons uh, and even the movies, stormtroopers can die because they're masked. They're anonymous, basically. Whereas, like, unhelmeted officers, they, they never straight die, you know? They're always taken prisoner or they're thrown in the uh, brig or whatever. It's the same principle with the foot soldiers, you know? That's why Dan said earlier... They made them robots in the first cartoon. And even that wasn't good enough, because as soon as they started slashing them up in the pilot episode, the parents came out and said, it's too violent. This is also the same generation of parents that thought Columbine is a result of Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yeah, I thought Doom got the rap for that one. Doom was was a big one. Like all the shooters, they called them murder simulators, and it yeah. might have been because that was yeah that was. I know Mortal Kombat came out in like what ninety four ninety five. Doom was like ninety six ninety seven. Yeah, 96, 97. yeah I, I remember Doom got a lot a lot of the flack because they found it on both of the guys' computers when <laughs> they they went to investigate their house. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I'd played Doom probably more than those two, and <laughs> I didn't shoot up my school. We all saw Teenage Ninja Turtles as kids, and now we're all ninjas running around. Like I mean, clearly. Yes. Although I, I, I won't uh, deny, my brother got um, hit upside the head multiple times with the bow staff growing up. But that wasn't solely because of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It definitely didn't help. <laughs> so we're going from '90s New York City to what well, is a great year to be alive. We were just on the cusp of Power Rangers fever, just taking America by storm. We had something else going on around that yeah. time, I'm sure. Yeah. Was, also, yes. the fact that the original Turtles movie only has a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes, again, shows me that people on Rotten Tomatoes don't have a clue. They got <laughs> yeah, it's got a 51, per- or 51 Metacritic score. Yeah, six point eight for out of ten for the IMDb user score. I think this is why we can't have nice things. I I don't even want to look at what the Bay Turtles has. You know it's better because uh, hold on, I can tell you. PG thirteen thirty one five point eight. It didn't do as good. Oh, okay. Okay. Twenty two percent, and okay. the twenty seventeen sequel is thirty seven percent. So actually, not much worse than the first one, even though the first one is a way better film than just a 3% lead. I do admit, oh. though, the, the reverse happened to me with the Bay films. I enjoyed the sequel more than the first one. I really enjoyed the sequel. I thought the sequel was better because at that point, they're like, we're ridiculous, let's lean into it. That and the live-action movies from the 90s don't really feel like an adaptation of the cartoon. They feel like they're in their own universe, and that's fine. But... The sequel, especially to the Bay Turtle movies, the uh, Out of the Shadows, feels like probably the closest we, as in our group demographic, are ever going to get to a live-action version of the cartoon we grew up Oh, my God, movie. yeah. Bebop and Rocksteady. Like, don't get me wrong. I thought Toka and Razor were cool. Yeah. But Bebop and Rocksteady is what I wanted to see in, in, in the movie we are about to watch. That, and then the, the opening car chase scene where, where Michelangelo pulls out the giant nunchucks that are attached to the turtle van. Like, that's something right out of the cartoon. That's just so ridiculous ridiculous and stupid but Dude, it's, they it's lean the into the crazy that's yeah. what i loved about that movie yeah they stopped taking it seriously they didn't go dark and edgy 
for the sake of going dark and edgy. And it, it worked a lot better. So I can definitely agree with the fact that it has a higher score on Rotten Tomatoes than the first one did. Not much higher, mind you. Yeah, well, the first one's 22%. This one's 37 So I don't know. The sequel, this is a good example of why less is more in the first one. It, there's, this one's got more action scenes, but they tone down the violence in the sense of it's all slapstick kind of fighting. And it's not, none of, they don't, the, the turtles don't get to use their weapons. In fact, you only see them use their weapons once, I think, in the whole movie. Yeah. That's when Leo throws his swords up at the ceiling to, to pull himself up. So that's the only time you see them use their weapons. It's so funny, like, they protested and they made this one more kid-friendly, and it wasn't as successful. Okay, yeah, they, the Bay Turtles get more cartoony, and it worked. This one, they tried to make it more cartoony, and it failed. Well, because you know, people who liked the first one liked it for a particular reason. Mm-hmm. And people who didn't like the first Bay Turtles one didn't like it for a particular reason. So they got rid of the reason people liked the first original Turtles movie, mm-hmm. so people didn't like it as much. But they <laughs> changed it to the reason that they would have liked it on the other aspects, so it, people liked it more. I wonder how they look uh, on the box office take. Which, speaking of the box office, did you see the insane poll of uh, last weekend? No. Like, Three thousand dollars. Wait, what? 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 Well, since the whole uh, coronavirus kicked in, the box office has effectively been shut. But there's one theater that's open, and apparently, it played three films, and it pulled in about three grand over a weekend. Well, that's actually probably pretty darn good, considering they're also the only theater open in America right now. Yeah, the, the movies that are playing too. It's like number one box office match. You were asking about the box office numbers. There was a huge drop off. The first Turtles movie, nineteen. 19- 202 million dollars at the box office teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 78.6 million dollars at the box office still enough to be considered a hit but not as big a hit as the first one we yeah because about- i remember the first one was a huge sleeper hit people weren't expecting it to be that good yeah mm-hmm. and we're talking about the the classic 90s one right yes so how much did you say that first one made in 90 the first one the 1990 teenage it's it's theatrical run in 1990 made 202 million dollars Jesus. And the sequel, Secret of the Ooze, its theatrical run made $78.6 million. This does not count home video sales or anything like that. So that's still, I mean, $200 million in the 90s? Yeah, and there's no international in that. It's straight America. That's good. Now that we've we've given a little bit of the backstory on the movie yeah. we are watching, let's actually get into watching the movie. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Yes. Uh, welcome to the tentatively first episode of Fire Pit. Uh, this is probably going to be more of a uh, episode zero sort of situation. We're still testing the waters, feeling the lay of the land. You know, the beginning podcast sort of stuff. This episode brought to you by, oh, well, no one. Don't have any sponsors yet. You know, first episode sort of thing. Uh, maybe one day in the future we'll get something. We'll see how it goes. However, this uh, episode... Uh, I would like to give a special shout out to Zaptig Brewing. They don't sponsor us, but again, figured I'd give them a shout out. Uh, their beer helped get us through this episode. Really would have been a much longer movie without some of their other stouts. Fantastic brewery here in Columbus. Again, we're still feeling things out, trying to determine you know, the kind of podcast we want this to be. And just uh, the whole philosophy is just uh, three guys sitting around talking about movies. The theme that uh, whoever was in uh, the last movie we just saw, we have to has to be in the next one. It could be good, could be bad, could be meh, but we'll find out together. And this is casual sort of thing. Speaking of bad, um, uh, let's get back to it. Thank you for joining, and uh, good luck. Well, that was the film. Well, My guys, God. that was fun. This the film I loved as a kid. Past me was dumb. Holy crud. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a movie. <laughs> it had a beginning, it had a middle, it had an end. What, 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 the first one is an example on how to adapt an IP, and the second one is how to ruin a good adaption. Also, the um, first one is an example on how to make a children's franchise ageless. And the second one is an example on how to make a children's franchise exactly for children. Yeah. How to ruin that franchise. I wouldn't say the second one is a movie ruining. No, the third one's the franchise killer. That one's absolute garbage. Yeah. This was, like I said, this was definitely a product of its time. Yeah. Man. 
I mean, you had the little ice, you had just cornball dialogue. We said before, the first one was inspired by the comic books. This was definitely more inspired by the cartoon. And it shows. It was just lacking the turtle mobile and the pizza shooter and the cheap skates. It was all the cheesiness of the cartoon and none of the over the top fun. Of yeah, course. well, that's which is why the second Bay Turtle movie is actually better because it leans into the fun. Mm-hmm. Well, not just that, they had the Technodrome and they had Dimension X in it too. Yeah, they also and Ancran, for, for the extent of the story, it made sense. It was ridiculous, but yeah. it was in line Krang. with the story. If they would have thrown in Krang and the uh, Dimension X and the Turtles too, then it would have been ridiculous. It, yeah. it wouldn't have made sense for the context of the story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Might have been what really killed it. Whereas the first one, like, kept it grounded. This one, like, it, its reach could not, be, it did not have the reach to grasp. It could not get to that high shelf that the Bay Turtles. Weird to say out loud. You know, giving praise to anything that is Bay, but Bay just had the resources to make it happen. He Again, remember, he didn't happen. direct those movies. Yeah, he was a pro- he, was, he was a producer, and his production company distributed the movie. But it definitely had his. Well, one of his proteges, oh, yeah. one of his proteges directed it. I mean, yeah, you know. just watching the first ten minutes of the remake, it's pretty obvious that Bay had an influence on it. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind that a director only needs to direct was it sixty percent of a movie. Mm-hmm. So he could have directed 40% of that movie, and we didn't even know it. I mean, more than likely. But like we said, he had the resources to make what was a almost spiritual successor to the cartoon series. It might as well have been a cartoon. It is what this second film could never have hoped to be. And also appease the parents' group. thing is, though, they did think of the children. They just didn't think of the adults that would also buy tickets. I imagine a lot of Turtle One success too is repeat viewing. Oh yeah, I mean that that isn't a movie. I mean, as much as we enjoy air quotes that movie, watching it subsequent times is not enjoyable. No, like I had no qualms today watching uh, the first movie again, even though I just recently rewatched it. But I have also recently rewatched the sequel. I did not want to watch that one tonight. <laughs> and this is going to be the theme of a lot of things. A lot of these ones, uh, we are going to rage into the dying of that light. That's, um... Oh, yeah, because as much as Dan doesn't want to watch Surf Ninjas, if that's the choice, Dan, you're watching Surf Ninjas. God help me. Okay, fine. <laughs> we saw Guyver 2. We have seen Josie and the Pussycats, which I still say holds up. Oh, trust me, if I had the choice of having to watch that one and not wanting to watch that one, I would rather not watch that one, but I do agree it's not a terrible, terrible film. Which it's going to be a lot of Russian roulette. So who's remind me again? Who's the who's who's the chain that links Turtles two to Three Ninjas? It's um I can't remember the the, the sidekick the, the Shredder. What's the actor's name? Um, Tatsu. Tatsu. There but it wasn't people. Tatsu that we're going to be linking. It was uh, Ernie Reyes Jr., a.k.a. Kino. Yeah. He was the lead no, we linked, we linked, yeah, we linked Tatsu in this one because he was in Showdown in Little Tokyo. That's Oh, shoot, he was. Yeah, that's right. Because mm-hmm. remember, that was the link. We were thinking it was going to come from uh, like Dolph Lundgren or Brandon Lee. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at some point, we're going to go up against Logan's run, and then we're going to go into Supergirl. It's going to happen. We, God help us all. <laughs> yep, they've oh, got they've got to be linked by an actor or so, at least an actor. No, so I'm it's like kidding. every single movie that we watch, even if we're still doing this five years from now, we'll at least have a uh, have a tra- or a trail leading back to the first movie that officially started it off, which was Showdown in Little Tokyo. We do have to watch out though, because eventually we may get to the point where we choose like a weird indie film just because it kicks like. Okay, who was in this film that was in something else? Um, yeah, we, we may w- walk ourselves into a corner, but we'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> we always do. I mean, still we, out if we point have point. to, we could go. We could step back. So we'll we'll give ourselves that option. We'll step back <laughs> yeah. and branch okay. off a different way. We'll we'll go obscure if we have to. Like, okay, well, the gaffer of this is like a, a, a step cousin to a Cohen's brother, so. Let's go with that as a connect. He was a caterer for uh, the remake of The Wicker Man, so or I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be sick for that one. <laughs> no, I, I got, I got it even worse. 
we're gonna ha- we're gonna get into like a three month long dredge. We keep trying to figure out a movie to watch, but we're dead set on keeping to this. But we can only find these really rough, really shitty indie films from the mid seventies, and it's like the only thing we could find because we are so dead set on maintaining this thing. We're not going to give up on it. So that's all that we're on. <laughs> it's a, like a, a series of B movies. And we have to go through like 10 movies before we can get to a movie with a halfway famous actor that'll get us out of the dredge. Well, and we'll call that the dredge period. <laughs> the dredge period. God, do you guys remember the dredge period of 2023? Oh, God, it went on for like three months. It was pain. I mean, I look at it this way, Josh. Out there somewhere is a podcast of a group of people who every Thanksgiving watch Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 and have committed to doing that until the end of days. So. We could be those guys. I watched Paul Blart once. I'm done with it forever. <laughs> yeah. I still, that, 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 that movie still has uh, holds a special place of hate in my heart for what it did to me and my box office picks. <laughs> you and me both. What, five months? Or five something, weeks? Something. Something. We're like, okay, this might be the week. It's actually off the top ten. And it comes back. It came back into the top five. No, that's what irked me most. It's like, it came back. Like, was yeah. there nothing in theaters? Really? Paul Blart. Mall Cop. Also, just as another rule, if Paul Blart, Mall Cop becomes like our next link in the chain, I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. I will retire. No, no. Me and Dan will, call, will drag you in, watch it. You're kicking and screaming. God damn it. But uh, this was a fun experience, I'm not going to lie. We saw one good childhood film. Well, one film that was from our childhood that held up. I definitely would say this is a quote-unquote childhood film. And one that should have remained in our childhood. But here we are, digging it out from the toy box. Dusting it off. Mm -hmm. Decals ripped to shreds. And none of the action figures that came with it were anything like their characters. Nope. Well, again, gentlemen, I'll see you next Friday at the fire pit for... I want to keep calling it Surf Ninjas. It is Surf Ninjas. I'm not going to force us to watch that. I just keep bringing it up because Dan made such a, a stink about it earlier. Dude, let's do Surf Ninjas. I don't give a shit, okay? It's fine. Yeah. We're doing <laughs> Surf Ninjas. <laughs> so we, we All right, this. fine. We are watching Surf Ninjas. You surf know. Ninjas next Friday. I've been Tom. Y'all want to see your sign-offs? Uh, I thought we discussed online today that I'm not allowed to do my sign Yeah, you're not allowed to, but uh, until next week. <laughs> I'll come up with one later. Yeah, until next uh, week. Later, guys. Peace. All right, later. Later.